South Sudan's a hot place, huh? It gets really hot. 110 degrees in the shade from you know February, March. But occasionally we, we get some pretty nasty thunderstorms and some nasty wind. And uh, yeah, this ain't, you ain't in Kansas anymore, Toto. Yeah? You gotta have your game face on to fly there. You think you're trying to, you are trying to find a needle in a haystack. And, but then you find the needle and, and then it, it starts creeping on. Okay, there's a group here. Um, there's a 500 there. And that people, if there are people in the plane who haven't seen it, they all get excited because they think that's a lot of animals. Oh, oh, isn't that wonderful? That's not what, that's great, but that's not what we're looking for. And then you see the edge. And then on the horizon, you see this red tinge on the green background. And then it turns out, you know, the whole horizon is covered with red and it's this, this herd of, you know, thousands and thousands of, of, of antelope out in the middle of nowhere, no one else around. And it goes on and on and on and on. Sometimes you see things that you say, wow, you know, nowhere else ever, anywhere in the world, maybe in history. My name is Paul Elkin, and I'm the country director for Wildlife Conservation Society's South Sudan program. We have the Tian, which, which move up towards the Nile, onto the Nile River flood, flood plains in the dry season. So they're seeking water and forage. At the same time, the Kob, they go up to the northwest towards the Ethiopian border. And that's where they find permanent water sources and forage around there. Yet you have different areas where, in, in this season, I, can, I have grass and water here, but then it disappears. Where can I get that grass and water? And so there's places that you need to get to in order to survive and have the best fitness. If you can't get there, you're in trouble. And, and that avenue you take between one source area and another is, is a corridor. It, it may have some resources in it within the corridor, but for, for simplicity's sake, you know, it's getting from one place to the next. And you need to do that at certain times of the year. By putting the collars, the GPS collars, which download the data of the satellite on our two principal migratory species, the, the Tiang and the Cub, we've been able to ad identify spatially and temporally in time when, when they need to pass through these areas and where. Over the past few years that we've been working there, pressures are actually greater now than they were during the war, because in a way, those species which could migrate away from the guns were protected. But now that they're building a country, roads are being built, so these species are at great risk now um, uh, as the country develops. And the, and the key question is how can they develop sustainably and, and, and integrate conservation in, into their development and nation building process. So there's that side of it, but then there's just the pure joy of, of seeing it and realizing, well, the Lord works in mysterious ways. And, this is one of those great wonders of the world.